is in previous years, uh, we've done more assignments during the, the, the term. So we've made the students do small parts of the game, like, you know, implement a networking session or um, do a high school list, or we've kind of had tasks and graded those um, and given more structure to the students. Uh, I've wound that back a bit, particularly going from a 10 to a seven and a half. Uh, and so just left the the making the game bit and try and make it just about your project um, rather than kind of make you do other tasks that gets in the way of the project. Um, so that's that's been my justification for why the learning is the way it is. Do you have any comments about is it is it a reasonable way of, of learning? Is it appropriate? And actually, I suppose one of the nice things about you guys uh, being able to comment in this way is you're all in this Google Doc as anonymous mink and anonymous squirrel and anonymous wolverine. So you get to actually make comment without having to identify which student is making the comment. So, you know, it's even potentially more freeing for you to be able to talk that way. Um, so if you have any thoughts on type of appropriate, do the individual learning activities clearly contribute to the stu students achieving the learning outcomes. Aha! Uh, transforming, OP, yep, um, they're generally fairly well communicated in lectures, but since a large part of the course is excellent, you're putting in comments, I love that. Um, and uh, self-managed, some of them. Yep, that's good. Um, so. What I'll do is I will continue talking through these and I'll leave this up. And while I go over some of the ethics stuff, I'll leave this up for a couple of days to, well, over the weekend uh, and you can give additional feedback when you think of it there. Anyone not currently in class can give also some feedback there. Um, so, uh, yep, and so that's in the do individual activities clearly contribute to the student's achievement goal. Um, which learning activities do the students experience provide the best learning for various students' goals. Um, so you could say, you know, you don't get much from these lectures, but you do like being able to ask questions and having me come and, and chat to you in the rooms, or you could say, yes, the, they, you'd, I mean, you'd prefer the structure, the courses to be more structured, whatever, whatever comments, anonymous comments you want to put in there. Um, is the teaching research-based? Ooh. Have, have Rich and I talk to you about the research we do in this area? Because, you know, I do a bunch of this stuff. And actually, the GitHub Copilot is to my, me trying to do research, so I suppose you could actually say that that's kind of at the cutting edge of trying to get access to the newest things. Um, from an HCI point of view, I actually have... Uh, we are... You know, like, so I don't know, do you guys have a digital COVID passport in Jervik or in Norway? You've got a kind of app mobile app that the government makes you show for your part, for your vaccination status. Um, so we're about to release one. And one of the nice things is because I've been working with the Ministry of Health here for a while, I'm one of their beta testers to do the HCI feedback for the app that every New Zealander will use to have to go to any, any sporting event or to the hairdresser or to the gym or that the app that everyone has to use, I get to do the beta testing and give the feedback um, to the ministry. So, you know, it's quite nice to be kind of included in the research community around trying to make those sort of things work. So we try and make it research-based. Um, so yeah, not enough feedback. That's a, that's a, fair, that's a fair comment. Um, and that's something we need, to, I need to organize more time for. So I think what I can do is go lecturer. Um, so my comment is an action point, action point. Um, allocate more, more time for specific feedback to group. Groups and assistance with game. Okay. 
Um, where, and so one of the things, and, and actually um, I was thinking of doing this this ethics lecture because I also think ethics is really important, but um, the next sessions will just be us trying to give feedback to the projects as you get nearer completion, right? So um, because we're aiming for that, that um, December deadline, um, we're now moving into the we're going to be reading your projects and trying to like look at your code and give you feedback on your games and try and give you better feedback. So I think we'll also do that, but I think that's a good point. Um, the scope is, is um, I think, not just very big. I think I might actually say, you know, make sure... Um, uh, I might argue that the scope is actually um, scope is not well defined, um, and that can be very stressful. However, part of of the course is developing scope and testing Z2 estimate. Um, now, just to reassure you, part of the reason why this is true is that um, my grading at the end of the year isn't focused primarily on the product that you develop. It is not a, did you make a good game? Make a good game, get high marks. Make a bad game, get low marks. It's a, what did you achieve? What did you learn? How did you do this? What was the process? How much have you learned about game development? And how much have you been able to demonstrate about your your learning and through your product? So um, I've been able to give students who game doesn't work very well because it broke in the last week a reasonably high mark because they were very ambitious and they tried a lot and they learned an enormous amount and they go on to do very well in their bachelor project. So um, it's stepping back from thinking this has to be a product that we're creating into, no, this is part of of learning, right? So um, yeah, depends on how I grade them. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't expect you to make the games that you first scoped if that makes sense, right? Because I'm not grading you on the product you do, I'm grading you on your process and how far you move rather than how how far and fast you move, not where you get to, if that makes sense. Um, ah, do students have the necessary prior knowledge? This is always a tricky one because uh, you're a range of students, we've got some international students, some of them will have nothing like the, the prior knowledge. Some of the master students will have things that are completely different prior knowledge. Um, I would really love to have a first year game, my first year game design specific course back because uh, I feel you gain a lot by having a first year game design course. But um, hopefully most of you have enough programming to feel like you can contribute to a game project. Um, but it would be nice to be able to give you more. Okay, but if you feel like you do, then that's great. Um, I'm I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, okay, should one increase or decrease? Should one? <laughs> how how very academicy of them? Should one increase or decrease the difficulty, um, degree of difficulty and scope of work in teaching? So, should I make this course harder or easier? Um, are the students content? Um, oh no, are the content and level adapted so the students from different study programs benefit from the learning activities? Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm, that, that is that is that's something we're trying to do. Um, I, if, if you can give me feedback to say, hey, look, I come from um, BDIR or BDIR or, uh, yeah, the other, the other degrees, so BPROG students probably, 
it lines mostly with them. Um, but if you're from outside of BPROC, um, maybe there's a, a if we oh, can work out the number of, uh, I mean, I've got, and I suppose, a number of students, but, but you know, if there are people who feel that, that it works for BPROGs, that's great. If, it do, if, if you're in a different major, say and say whether it works or not. Um, and is the progression of the learning activities, um, the progression in the learning activities correct? So this is the one I'm probably, I, you, could, you could easily get very grumpy at me because is it correct? I don't believe there is a correct progression. Um, I feel whatever you want to learn is the pro correct progression rather than my decision before we started the course. So I'm I'm not entirely convinced that this is that there is a correct progression. Um, so so yeah, so the, the the correctness of progression is is relevant there. Um, is the progress at the level that indicates that the students will achieve the learning outcomes um, for the course during the semester? Um, if any of you feel like we're not moving fast enough or we're moving too fast, I, yeah, then that's, that you can comment there. Is the impression of the student's own, um, ah, what is the impression of the student's own efforts and motivation? So I think is the course motivating and interesting? Um, we're trying, um, but you know, you can make good comment on, on whether or not we're succeeding. Oh, that one I need to go and do formatting on, ah, don't worry about it. Um, it's just this, it sometimes gives the extra gap here. Um, you haven't, so, we haven't really had a form of assessment um, one of the things we're moving into now is actually also going to be talking about exactly what the assessment on the game project looks like, right? Um, and I know I've, I've talked about, you know, we're, we're, we are going to look at, at good code and bad code and we're looking at your reflections and the work that you've done and um, your understanding of, of, of the game that you make. So uh, there'll be a report next to the game. We also will look at you know how well you've worked in your teams, um, how you've used your your um, how you've made your decisions, those sorts of things. Um, so those will be part of that assessment, um, but those will be based on you, our agreement on exactly how that assessment works. Right um, now, to some extent, you could we could try and say, oh, well, we we know exactly how we're going to be assessed before we start the project. I don't think you know what you what what is relevant for assessed until you kind of into it a little bit. So um, that's why I've kind of pushed back the the discussion on the fine details of the assessment until we're at this point where we're a month out, um, a bit over a month, um, five weeks out, and then we can start saying, okay, what is the what what like what does the finish line look like, and how are we going to be assessed? So this one, they would actually would like us to do this again after the end of the course and after you've received your grades back so that sometime in January we have another Discord meeting with the whoever's still around and go through this again and actually talk about the assessment and whether you felt it was appropriate once you've done the final assessment. Um, is, is it in alignment? You don't really know until after you've done it. Um, so... <laughs> So, yeah, maybe not. Uh, does the assessment form contribute to student learning? So this is the idea that, that the assessment is of you making a game. Is that helping your learning? Possibly, probably. Um, it seems to be pretty much aligned with the learning to get program games as we make you program a game and then we assess you on your programming of a game. Um, is the learning involved? Ah, okay, so is... Is this acceptable? Um, I'm now a bit of a hangover from COVID because I was supposed to stop working for Norway two years ago. Uh, well, yeah, 18 months ago. Um, but COVID came along and they decided everybody's doing this. And so, hey, we can keep Simon and and we'll just try and keep teaching. Um, and he can teach online and we're all teaching online, so it'll be fine. Um, but, you know, you might decide that, that 
the online teaching is actually much worse than in person. And so this is a place to comment on that and whether we're doing the reasonable job of this um, kind of, of engagement. So that's a, a good place for you to comment in there um, and make us improve what we do. Um, decide on one game environment that everyone should use. That's yeah, and that that's a fair comment, and I I um, that's something I have considered. Um, we have done mandatory um, game engines in the past, um, and uh, here in Nor um, here in my course. Uh, New Zealand, we force everyone to use Unreal, so we have a single game engine that is Unreal. Previously, we've all we've done um, uh, Unity, as everyone does Unity. Uh, so, you know, there are. However, we've we've also been flexible in some of these. Um, I think it's much harder when we don't have a first year course that is a game design course because then we don't have as much background coming in. And so I think you're right. I think it potentially um, this might be necessary in a 7.5 course. Um, action, evaluate, game, engine, to prescribe in 22. Um, I don't actually know if this course is running in 2022. If, if I don't know if Marius is still around, he may have had to go off and actually be have a life um, because he's quite busy. Um, yeah, I'm oh, no. around. And the, course will to run. <laughs> hmm? the course will continue to run. Okay, so the course is continuing to run. So there will be a 22 version. Okay. Um, yes. But you know my contract ends, so I I I may not be the the, the person actioning this, but um, someone should action it. Um, you know we can always talk about whether whether or not you want to keep me. Well, if you if you are out, we are in trouble. Definitely. <laughs> well, you know I'm, yeah, well, I tell you what, the market in New Zealand for programmers it's just gone insane all of the students are getting jobs before they finish the, the the courses and they're all off getting paid a huge amount of money it's it's really tight out here and as you guys all heard, well I don't know I don't know if it, it probably made the news there that unity bought Weta digital um, so 270 of uh, the graphics and um, in engineers here have been bought by unity so that they get the, the Weta digital um, tools built into Unity. So, yeah, I, I didn't know. That's a great news two, for New Zealand. Yeah, $2.3 billion. So Unity paid, um, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Lord of the Rings director. Um, my mind's gone blank. Um, That's but, Yes, Jackson. Yeah, Peter Jackson. Um, so they paid Peter Jackson two point three billion dollars for the to buy all of Weta, the Weta digital part. He still got fifteen hundred visual artists, which are now Weta FX. Um, but yeah, so that's Unity making a massive play into the film space to try and fight Unity um, to fight Unreal, which is being used in films. So um, is the contact between subject teachers and students good and sufficient um subject teachers uh the subject teachers are richard and i i believe so um that's that's what we're, we're, we're so is the contact between the subject teachers and the students good and sufficient so maybe it's not sufficient it might not be good but at least you know this you can get to comment there anonymously um which is probably better than than putting your hand up in class um space for lectures reading rooms computer rooms and group rooms um is that more of a ha 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 yeah hmm do do you think so i've i've um put two i've i've i pay 99 dollars a year to have uh, Discord Nitro, so that I can try and increase the street streaming quality for these um, talks, um, because also and give me better better quality video and make the server run better and make the audio on the server better. Um, 
do you think the university should be paying for more boosting of the server? Um, is the other, is one of the other questions. So um, that that could make dis the Discord they could boost the Discord server more. Um, uh, Um, if the Discord has many teaching tools, oh, it has main teaching tool, then probably should pay. So, yep, um, you can go in, in <laughs> indoor climate, sound, lighting conditions, and like. So, basically, this is like, you know, it, how is your home? <laughs> um, and facilitation students with disabilities. Now, that is a, a, a point, um, and admittedly, I haven't asked the class um, if, if there is some disability issues that uh, we are we are not satisfying um, generally uh, so from an accessibility p perspective just so you know I um, it, the um, discord is one of the best tools around disability support because it's got a fabulous screen reader and it does a really good job of of providing that um, so uh, and and I would be happy to give a talk about disabilities uh, and accessibility in games. Um, so there's uh, actually um, my one of my PhD students here uh, in uh, New Zealand is did his master's in doing a deaf game and now he's doing three different um, modalities. So he's doing a vision only game where he's turning sound into LED lighting using um, AI to work out what kind of sound it is and then lighting appropriately around the outside to to try and embed you in the in the um, game with no audio an audio only game um, and a tactile game so he's he's looking at different modalities and how you switch between so we can we can talk, so talk about color blindness and disability I've got a couple of I've got a, I've got a really good lecture on that um, so I'm I'm really happy to give that lecture if you'd like that I'll do that for next week. Um, seeing we're running out of time, um, and yep, yeah, okay. So that's the end of the questions. Uh, if there is anything else you'd like to do, I see a few people have put more stuff in here, uh, some workshops. That'd be great. Um, I will collect all of this and we'll report it back to um, Central and we'll make action points about these things. Okay, so. Um, and uh, Rich and I and Marish can probably have a look at them. Um, also, just make sure that for the last six weeks before or five weeks beforehand, and uh, we do anything that we can to make make this better. Uh, and disabilities, and if if you have a disability and you feel there's something we should have done for you, um, please tell us, and I'll try and find a way of making it it easier um, to engage. Okay. Right. You don't need to see my. So that's probably not a great screen to have up. Um, I should just go to there. Right. So ethics. Ethics and games. Haha. -ha. Um, so what I'll do is I'm just going to do a really quick start here, and then we're going to have a break, and then I'll let you, then we'll come back and we'll do the the questions. Okay. So we're gonna gonna do this in in. And a quick, a, a, a quick flow. If you want to make add more comments, go through add more comments to that document. Um, okay, so one of the things that I said in the learning outcomes is that you have to learn ethics. I believe you have ethics in everything we do in computer science uh, and in game development. There are an ethical perspective to what we do. Now, when we talk about ethics, we generally break this into three groups. We have legal. Um, ethical and moral all right so legal is what the authorities tell you to do ethical is what your group uh, or association tell you what to do um, and moral is uh, the more personal direct on what what is right and wrong for you as an individual uh, so these usually overlap um, and hopefully most of what you do is moral legal and ethical so it's somewhere in the middle here um, but you can find things that might not be in this inner section here. So there might be things which you consider um, moral and ethical, but might be considered illegal. Um, now, there's some people who would put something like, um, well, yes, 
smoking marijuana is not immoral for some people, but is illegal in some places, right? So um, where, you know, consuming drugs might be. Um, there is no, you know, things that, that are um, unethical for some people aren't unethical for others. Uh, so you can have things that might you might consider immoral. Um, some of the, the uh, processes you have for, you know, extracting money from people uh, the ads I get on my YouTube for, you know, selling books on Amazon when you haven't written them. And it's kind of, no, but that's immoral because you're taking someone else's work and and selling it when you've done nothing and you're just making money from providing. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I find that immoral. It, apparently, it's legal. So just because something's legal doesn't necessarily make it moral or, or, um, or ethical. GDPR... Um, has defined a whole bunch of morality around stuff, some uh, around legal, legality around things, some of which feel, yeah, that they might not be, it might not cover everything you need, or it might create restrictions and enforce, which you don't want. Now, when we talk about moral, we actually have a whole bunch of words associated with moral. Um, fair use of copyright as duff is a big issue, yes. Um, and, and, um, Fair use, there's a bunch of stuff around legalities around fair use, which feels unethical and immoral. Uh, I actually really don't like the idea of artists being able to sell the rights to the their creations and then being told that they're not allowed to sing the song that they wrote. It feels That feels like it's not right. It, you shouldn't... They, they, they should always be an exemption for an artist so they can sing their own songs, right? It just feels wrong that they sell that option and they're told, no, no, we own that, you can't do that, right? It just feels, feels wrong, even though that's what the law states. In English, we have a whole bunch of, of words around morality, um, and I, as far as I know, there is, there is as many in Norwegian around morality. So you have moral... There's a group of things which we call non-moral and a group of things we call immoral, right? So moral is green and great, so you can do what you like, right? Moral is good, right? Non-moral things are strawberry versus chocolate. We do not consider this a moral debate. So it's just, it just, it doesn't have a moral component. Now, I mean, unless, of course, you want to dig and then say, oh, look, those cocoa beans weren't ethically farmed Oh, but those strawberries came from a Norwegian grower that's using coal to heat the the strawberry enclosure, and so it's got a huge carbon foot. So, you know, you could dig in and find moral arguments deeper somewhere, but generally the decision between chocolate and strawberry is not a moral one. Um, should I wear the blue shirt or the red shirt? Uh, immoral are things that are, are explicitly not consistent with your moral beliefs right they are the things that are you reject and say explicitly we should not do this right so you can think of that you've got a small area of things that you say you are morally entitled to do or morally obliged to do some things have no moral standing and some things are immoral there are amoral where you don't actually care about the morality now this is not saying these are not moral decisions it's just they're moral decisions but i'm amoral so i don't care about anything related to morals and there's a, a thought of things that are unmoral, um, which is the cloud of all of the other things that have nothing to do with morality. At least these non-morals are, and they're, they're non-moral as you didn't make a non-moral decision. Unmoral is kind of way out there and beyond, um, beyond thought, um, you know, potentially everything to do with, you know, do I use a verb or an adjective, right? Or is, is an adjective a moral concept? And it's kind of not, well, no, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So, so yeah, there are things outside. Um, but to realize we have a group of words around morality, we also have, and when we're thinking about games, um, what you accept in a game, some people will accept different things to you. And that's what we're going to get to is when you ask different opinions. Uh, and we'll have a quiz and you guys will give me feedback. Um, going through legal, there is things that are legally protected. There are things that are legally prohibited. And there's a whole bunch of things in the middle which are not legally protected but not illegal. Right? So 
It's not that they're legal and it's not that they're illegal, it's just they're not covered by law. Again, some of the strawberry stuff fits into this. Sometimes when they decriminalize crime, so they decriminalize drugs, they move them from illegal into the not illegal but not legally protected. So, you know, individual city councils can then have bans on certain drugs because you've got no legal protection for, the, for, for um, having access to that drug. It's just you've not legally punished for it. Right? So it moves into a, a different space rather than having a, a tax and a legal framework around those things. Right? So those are, those are some of the differences. And um, so in New Zealand, we're, we're still in the middle of a cannabis law reform. You see the US has gone through a massive cannabis law reform. Most states have moved to making cannabis um, or decriminalizing cannabis uh, marijuana, but um, it's still federally illegal so they're in a, a real kind of crazy transitional state um and so yeah understanding those legal requirements as a game developer we have to understand the legal requirements of the judiciaries that we are sending our games into um so richard one of the games that that um the my child Levenborn, um kept having ch challenges in uh, the German market and actually through a whole bunch of European markets for having Nazi flags flying in the game early because it's about World War II. So it has Nazi flags because that tells you it was World War II and the German can't have Nazi flags in anything. And it's kind of, well, but this is historically, this is a historical comment. It is not promoting Nazism. Um... And so luckily for Richard and the crew, um, they got a BAFTA and were able to wave that in front of people and saying, look, look, other people think it's okay. Um, so that's where you start falling on a, a legal edge of the legal framework. Um, but, you know, My Child Levin's Born is also an ethical question. Um, when we talk about ethics and once we move into the field of ethics, uh, if you're doing computer science, um, you may have heard of the ACM, hopefully. Um, the ACM is the Association of Computing, um, Computing Machines, um, and it is it has its own code of ethics. I'm an ACM member, and so I have to follow this code of ethics. This particular code of ethics is actually quite restrictive. I'm not going to go through it all because it's quite it's reasonably long, not um, not enormous, but um, there are some general ethical principles here, uh, which say things like. Um, Contribute to society and to human well-being, acknowledging that all people are stakeholders in computing. So I have to contribute to well-being. Um, I have to avoid harm. Uh, I have to be honest and trustworthy. Um, fear and not discriminate. So there's, you know, not discriminate on any of these. Um, respect the work and um, to um, work to reproduce new ideas, innovations, creative works and computing artifacts. This is the copyright issue. So the ACM has a requirement that I am ethical in my use of things. Um, there's an interesting debate happening currently over this one in the ACM and GitHub Copilot because some people say you're not respecting open source projects by using them to make your coding easier by letting Microsoft having scraped all of GitHub to generate um, Copilot. Um, and respecting privacy. And there's also one here uh, on a confidentiality. There's uh, strive to achieve high quality both. So the, yes, basically I'm not allowed to have bugs in my code. Um, understand existing rules, accept and pride of Give comprehensive and thorough evaluations of computer systems and their impact, including analysis of possible risk. So these are all the ethical requirements of a ACM member. Um, there is also a group who have done something similar for game development and looking at what are what's the ethics that game developers should have um and so uh, and you know they, they talk about both in terms of ethics towards your employees and towards your players right so um it's not just about the ethics and relating to the players also within the company um, so I thought I'd just quickly, and I only want to go for another about three minutes and then we'll have a break, um, go through some some theories around how you make a decision around the ethics you have. Uh, so there's a bunch of consequentialist theory. Um, consequentialist theory 
looks at the consequences of your actions and uses that to decide whether they were ethical or moral. So a utilitarian looks at the consequences of their action for everybody and uses that to decide whether the action is good or not. Right. So, um, yeah, and we can look at, at, at the trolley problem. Fewer people die, that's better. You shouldn't be a special actor. So, you know, if I have a choice between my child dying and 10 children dying, I should be willing to accept my child dies because that's better than having 10 children die. So that's a utilitarian approach. A hedonism, you know, hey, I just want to have fun um, and I'll make choices based on what feels best um, as a, at the end of the action. And there's sort of, you know, common good ones where it's the will of the people is more important. So, so long as everybody agrees that this was the right action to take, then it was the right action to take um, because it's to the common good. There's non-consequentialist ones which say, hey, no, no, wait a minute. No, no, no. If you kill someone, no matter what the situation, it was wrong, right? Because the action was wrong. I don't care that you saved other people. That's not important. Doing what you did, killing someone was wrong, so it's a it's an absolute rule, and so you can you can have that kind of. It's not about the consequences; it's the action itself was wrong. Um, now Kant uses a a rule based system, uh, and also uses the categorical imperative to say, hey, you should have rules which you would want applied to everybody evenly. Um, there is rights based things where you write you. Oh, gotta go that way. You set up bills of rights, you set up lists of rights that people have, and then you act according to those rights rather than according to the consequences of actions. Uh, and there's, you know, fairness and justice, and there's a divine command, um, which is a non consequentialist, which is a you do what God says because He said she told you to do it. Um, there are agent centered ones, so there's virtue ethics, uh, which is making decisions about what's ethical based on what a good person would do. Right? And then you require to work out what a good person is. So they're, they're a bit circular sometimes. And these are femin feminist ones where they talk about empathy and emotions being specifically included in your reasoning rather than pure logic. Um, so it's it's actually respecting the whole human being. And so there's a whole another field of, of the agent making the decision has to be treated holistically. So lots of different theories. Um, we're not going to go through. If you want to, there's a game that you can play, and I've listed link at the end, where you, it can try and tell you which kind of reasoning you do to make your decisions. Um, in morals, you know, we're going to be thinking about what's right, right? Stick them to your moral code. If you fail your moral code, you fail yourself, right? If you fail your legal code, you get removed from society. If you fail your ethical code, you get removed from that ethical group. So... I'll skip over the categorical imperative. You can go and find that out about, go and look up Kant, read about the categorical imperative. Um, but some of the things is to understand that humans are uh, an end in themselves. They are not an instrument of your will. So you should not treat humans as merely pawns in your game to make, to, to get what you want. Um, and again, go and look up utilitarianism and some consequentialism. And we're then going to go into Socrative. Uh, I'm going to take a break. And that was when I said I would. I'll give you a 10-minute break, back at 25 past. And we'll do Socrative as our discussion platform. Uh, you should be able to go into the student login in Socrative and use McCallum 7979. And actually, we're actually only running each question once rather than twice um, because I'm going to shorten the length of time. Okay, so get yourself in there. Uh, I'll jump on and set that up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start discussing things like the trolley problem. And I shall uh, grab that link because I need to put it in the chat for people who want to play that while we have a look at that, while we have a break. Uh, and we'll have a break now and we'll come back and we will do questions about ethics and work out what kind of ethics and what kind of game ethics you're interested in right? and what's the group decisions okay so five minute break but no eight minute break now back at 25 past okay Sorry. a bit of a woot through ethics and we're going to play some ethical dilemmas 
I'll pause the recording. Interesting. It's removed my pause button. I'll stop and stitch. Okay.